in today's video I'm going to be taking you through a bullet game that I played yesterday in which I pulled off one of the rarest mates in chess and I'm sure you've seen it before but to actually play it in a practical game like an actual real life game rather than like a puzzle or some kind of tactic is rare for sure especially in a bullet game so I'm very happy I spotted it. The game starts with e4 e5 knight c3 the Vienna game. And my opponent plays a bit of a weird line. He goes for c6. And the point is that my knight and my pawn control the d5 square, which is the main point of the Vienna. And black wants to play d5, right? Because I'm not actually putting any pressure on the e5 pawn, so there's no actual need to go knight c6 defending it. But this isn't a good move. And I don't play it completely accurately. It's a bullet game, it's whatever. I go bishop c4 to stop d5 with the bishop. And my opponent plays knight f6, insisting on playing d5, because the only way for me to add another defender to the d5 square is by playing queen f3. But apparently black can just play b5, kick my bishop, and I assume b4 to kick my knight, and then go d5. So this is very reminiscent of what actually happened in the game, right? C6 is not only used to support the D5 push, but also a B5 push to get the pawn to B5 with tempo so that B4 can kick the knight away before I can actually stop him. With me? Cool. So D4 is the move. And D4 is good because after takes takes, my queen defends a D5 square which achieves the same goal as queen f3. But the difference is, after b5, bishop drops back, b4, knight drops back, d5 here can be met by taking, and if my opponent takes back, then bishop g5, because I have d5 play, d4 played even, instead of queen f3, the bishop is now open to put pressure on the knight, and there is no way you can sufficiently defend this pawn. I'm in a queenside castle, maybe play knight f4. It's going to be way too much pressure. b4 is under attack in a lot of positions. King is very weak to potential bishop a4 ideas in the future. This is absolutely crushing. Black's position is falling apart because he's massively overextended his pawns. So takes... Queen takes b5, bishop drops back, b4, knight drops back, and then c5, because d5 doesn't work, right? Now, if I play a move like queen e3, d5 might work. I mean, you can take with discovered check, but the engine doesn't think this is all that bad. But essentially, black is trying to get d5 in by kicking my queen away. I go queen c4 which isn't the best move. My idea is that I'm threatening mate and there's no good way for black to defend it. But d5 is actually possible. And in the game I was like, what? Can I not just take? Now I guess the reason being is that if my queen drops back to a square like d1 and then d5, then I assume I can take with the bishop. Or I can push e5 kicking the knight and then take on d5 with like an attack on the rook so e5 doesn't fall but the way that it works in the game after queen c4 d5 i can't play e5 to kick the knight because my queen's under attack it's a bullet game who cares about it it's not that deep right computer says black's doing well but after takes he is just down a pawn he finds the best move bishop d6 otherwise i might play d6 myself to set up attacks, get my I might get my bishop out to f4 to try and get more control over the d6 square. So bishop d6 is good. It's a blockading move. Bishop f4, offering a trade of bishops, because like I say, I want to get control of d6 so I can start throwing this pawn down the board, because it is the best thing about my position, really. Especially because black now castles, and this queenside over-expansion is no longer really hurting his position because his king's his king is now nice and safe. So I queenside castle, which is a massive blunder. 
yes, it defends the d5 pawn, but it blunders to bishop a6. And my queen is trapped. My queen has nowhere to go. I can try and take on d6, and if my opponent takes back, then I open up an avenue for my queen to escape. But you can just take my queen. And I can try taking on f8. But a move like bishop takes b3. And at the end of the day, I'm down how much material? Like a rook for a queen. Obviously, this is completely losing. But again, it's a bullet game. My opponent doesn't see this and instead goes queen c7, which allows bishop takes, queen takes, and knight f3. And you might be saying, what about bishop a6? Because my queen is under attack, and it's an x-ray on my knight, and my queen can't defend my knight, because this knight has developed and is no longer defending. Well, I do have queen f4, offering a queen trade, and his queen is undefended, so he can't just take the knight because he loses a queen, right? And if he trades queens with me, then I take back with the knight, so it's no longer under attack. And I have insane development. This pawn is incredibly scary for black to try and deal with. My h-rook is probably going to come to the e-file. This is a beautiful position. And this is fairly reminiscent of what actually happened in the game. I went knight f3. My opponent went a5 first and here i got a little bit spooked by the move a4 apparently queen f4 here is good again offering a queen trade it's very difficult to black for black to actually decline it if he tries to move the queen back to a square like d8 then i just keep advancing i assume this pawn is going to get pushed and if a4 ever comes let's say knight e5 a4 then my bishop has the c4 square because the queen vacated it with queen f4 I got a little bit spooked. I went bishop a4, just stopping any advancement on the queen side. And the game is now actually pretty much equal, but my opponent has to prove it. He goes knight bd7. And the problem with knight bd7 is yes, it develops a knight, but it also vacates the c6 square. And I go bishop c6, attacking the rook. Bishop a6 into mezzo. Now, this move has been on the cards for a long time. Here, it's not that good. Because, yes, you skewer. But the move that I've alluded to several times, queen f4, forces a queen trade. Again, if the queen tries to decline the trade, a move like queen e7, then the rook's hanging. And if bishop tries to take, then I assume I just pin his bishop to his queen. Something like this d2 the bishop can't be defended i'm going up an exchange and this pawn again is a massive problem for black to deal with because he struggles to set up a good blockade unless he uses like both knights to defend the d7 square in which case his king side could become quite weak if i double on the e-file especially if it was like knight g5 or knight e5 coming in trying to dislodge the knight or target the weak king side squares so, my opponent has to trade, and I take back with the knight, so it's no longer under attack. Rook b8 saves the rook, because remember, the bishop was attacking it. And now I go rook he1. And this position is so perfect. I've got this rook defending my passed pawn. I've got this rook on the open file, which is very difficult for black to contest. These knights are doing a gr this knight's doing a great job of defending the pawn, and it's very difficult to actually remove it because if you play a move like g5, my knight just takes. So although my knight is defended by nothing, uh, it it is kind of on an outpost, right? Like tactically, the f4 square is an outpost. Black has no dark squared bishop to attack my knight. His rooks can't attack my knight. His knights also can't attack my knight because all the squares that do so are undefended, and this knight needs to keep an eye on the d7 knight, and g5 isn't playable. So black can't actually kick my knight out. This knight is going to be coming into the game soon on a very aggressive square, and this bishop is really tying down the rest of the black position, stopping moves like a4, 
attacking this knight, which means that this knight also can't move, and kind of dominating his bishop as well. And if a rook ever comes to the e-file, there could be issues with pins against the knight. So beautiful position, absolutely perfect. My opponent goes c4, and this is a very good move, because although the computer might not love it, he doesn't have much of an option. He has to try something. Here, the best idea for me is g4, trying to play g5 to dislodge this knight and then take this knight. But bear in mind, it is a bullet game, right? We're not going to be playing perfectly whatsoever. So after c4, I went rook e7, which is logical because I threaten to take the knight. So the knight goes to c5, which is a very active square, again, freed up by the move c4. And I go rook d4, which you might think is a bit of a strange move, but my idea is that I'm a bit worried about a move like knight e4. So say, I don't know, I play a move like h3, then, I don't know, knight f e4 looks a bit dangerous. His, his knights are starting to put some pressure on my position. Moves like c3 and b3 are potentially coming in. This bishop can get opened up. Computer says, nothing to worry about. Just play d6 and open up this attack. Knight has to move, and now your pawn is one step further. The computer is obviously correct. But I liked the move rook d4 because it just stopped any counterplay and also put a bit of pressure on his queenside pawns. So a4 is played. Again, he's trying to make b3 work to force open some lines against my king. I go d6. I just continue advancing because if I can get this pawn to d7, there's going to be big problems for black on the back rank. b3, which is the logical move. I go a3, which isn't the best, but in a practical sense, I thought it was very good. The computer likes a takes b3, but I wasn't a fan of c takes b3. I can't take because knight b3 check wins my rook. So I would have to play c3, really, to keep the files closed. And then a move like a3 was quite scary to me. Because I thought he forces open the b file, and this pawn looks very dangerous. And again, whilst the computer says there's nothing to worry about, if any of black's pieces gain control of b1, then I lose. There's no need for me to allow this. So, practically speaking, it's far better, in my opinion, to play a3. And after takes takes, yes, the b-file is open, but none of black's pawns can go anywhere. And he has access to the b3 square, which he makes use of with his knight to attack my rook. But just rook d1. And black can't make any progress on the queen side. So I was very happy with this. The knight retreats back to a5, which attacks my bishop. So I move the bishop to e4, which is apparently a bad move. I should have just taken on a4. And honestly, I just missed my bishop was attacking a4. In my defense, I had 15 seconds. So I hope you can forgive me. By the way, if you've reached this far in the video, Drop a cheeky little subscribe so you get notified when future videos drop because I upload every single day. Have been doing for the past like 100 days, so it's not stopping anytime soon. If you want to improve your chess, then this is the place to be. Knight a5 attacks the bishop. Bishop drops back. And this move is bad from me. Not because of knight takes and rook takes, which is what was played in the game. A really strange move, which, I mean, even if I was given this position for like 10 minutes, would I have found it? Don't know. When you see it, it makes sense. And the move is c3. If b takes c3, then knight c4 and a3 is weak. My king can't cross because of the rook. And the only way to defend the a3 pawn would be to play rook a1 which drops d6, which is the best part of my position, and it's the reason that I'm better in this position. So that's a problem. And if I take with the king, then the c file opens. The rook comes over to check, king d2, and I assume b2 just falls, although this is apparently losing. Apparently knight c4, and then king e1, and then knight takes b2 is better with an attack on the rook. 
but d7 gets very complicated. This was apparently black's best try. c3 is a really, really nice move when you see it. But in this position, it makes so much sense to, to take the bishop. Because if you don't, then a move like bishop f5, d7, looks like a problem. So we trade. Bishop c8. And bishop c8 is odd, because it just allows d7 with tempo. So the bishop moves to b7 to attack my rook. I go rook fd8. I expected him to take here and play rook fd8 and say that you can't get in. This looks nice, but how are you actually going to promote that pawn? I do have a move like knight d5, which is similar to what I played in the game. And rook takes isn't a move because knight f6 check picks up the rook. Knight e7 check doesn't work because of rook takes knight. And you might be thinking this is back rank mate, because if rook takes, it is. But rook e, wait, no, 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 just, just rook e8. I don't need to specify which file. Rook e8 and black has sufficient defense and is just up a piece. So worth watching for these tactics, but you have to actually calculate it. The problem is I have no time. So I just play simply d7, rook d4. Rook d8 and knight d5. Again, you can't take here, not because of knight e7, but knight f6. And I pick up the exchange and it's very winning. My opponent sees this. He doesn't take here because after rook takes, it makes my life quite easy. The knight is forced to move. My king can probably just come and pick up all the pawns, but maybe this was more resilient. The problem is... His pieces are tied down to the defense of my pawn. And if my rook and king can work to get rid of these pawns, I'm just going to create another passer and then it's game over. But maybe this was a better way to defend. He doesn't take. He goes knight c6. I take on c4. Knight goes back to b8 to attack the d7 pawn. And here it gets cool. I go knight e7 check. King is forced to move. And I go knight e5. I liked knight e5 because it attacks the d7, sorry, it defends the d7 pawn. I have a massive grip over c6, so black's knight is going to struggle to get out. And if it comes to a6, I control all of these squares that it would like to go to. So it's essentially stuck to the back rank. His rooks have no movement because I control both c8 and e8. And my knight now controls g8. Black is essentially frozen. He can only really move his bishop, right? If he takes on like g2. Rook c8, black can't take because he loses everything. Whoops. He loses everything. I'm up a rook. It's game over. So his bishop kind of has to maintain the defense of c8. Black can't move. And because black can't move, he attacks my knight to try and kick me out so that he can move. The problem is this sets up one of the prettier checkmate patterns in the game of chess. And the move is knight to g6 check. And the problem is the king can't move because my knight controls the g8 square. And this forces open the h file. So after pawn takes, rook h4 is mate. This is known as Anastasia's mate. It's something to keep an eye out for. There's often many ideas in chess where, let's just say for the sake of argument, um, black just shuffles around a bit. There's many ideas of something like rook takes F7, h7, king takes and rook h4 where the knight controls black's king's movement over to the other file while my rook cuts off the h file common idea um to sack on h7 first which is good to know but here that's not necessary because i can instead force him to open the h file for me rook h4 is mate very pretty i think that this position here is one of my favorite positions I've seen in a while, just because black can't move. I mean, the computer wants g5, 
that's how dire the situation is. <laughs> that's how bad the position is that G5 is the move. No, no one plays G5, especially in a bullet game. In fact, you know, most people would just resign here. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you also enjoyed the checkmate. I thought I had to show it because it's just so cool looking. And I'll see you in the next one.